Well, this morning, if you turn your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 12, I have some famous scriptures that I have dwelt on for years. And if you've been here, you're thinking I'm being redundant. (laughs) If you've been here for some time, you've heard me preach and teach on these a number of, but they're so powerful, so rich. And every time you change the angle you're looking at the jewel, the gem that God has given us in the scripture, you see a different facet. And it's like you've seen it for the first time again. So once you've found Romans chapter 12, put a bookmark there. We'll get it to it in a moment. Let's start out with Romans chapter 10. The month of February, I spent talking about freedom and the various tools that God has given us to be able to handle the places in our life that we are not free. And sometimes you don't know you're not free until God pulls back the veil, or I should say, shines his light on the darkness that's in my soul that I, I thought I was doing really good. I'm, I'm great. And then God shines some light and says, let me, let me show you this. And you go, oh God, I need you again. I, I'm not good. And told Revelations, you know, you thought you were rich, but you're not, okay? And so I continually need to go into the presence of God and say, Father, shine your light on the parts of me that are broken, hidden, not right. I want freedom. And I love those, those messages. It's just full of nuggets. And, and, uh, and then last week, we started a series called What's Coming Out of Your Mouth? I love the whole topic of knowing what you're saying. Your words have power to kill or heal. And understanding that, and um, this morning, I want to do part two of how God has designed our bodies to respond just the physical. And then you pull the spiritual in. What takes place when I say with my mouth words, what's coming out of my mouth? So before we get to our scripture, Let's pause our hearts and ask Holy Spirit to cause there to be anointing that we can't imitate. We can't work it up. It's not an intellectual thing. I need the voice, the breath of the Father to breathe and bring revelation, right? We don't need Pastor Gary's two bits. We need Holy Spirit. So God, as we're in your presence this morning, fall like the rain on this thirsty soul. Just like as it is outside, we're thirsty for that rain physically in our environment. Across our nation, in Sealy Lake, we are desperate for an outpouring of your spirit. Here this morning, we draw a circle on the floor, stand in the middle and say, God, here's the problem. Right here is where we need an outpouring of your spirit. And as we read these scriptures and look at the principles, God, that you have put into order, I pray, God, that our lives will be forever changed by the word we have hid in our hearts. God, today, bless us as we hear your word. Amen. Romans chapter 12, note 10. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. These These scriptures as texts should be ones that you have memorized or should memorize because they are weapons of war that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Chapter 10, verse 17 says, Then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, I want you to notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that faith comes from hearing the word of God. Seems contradictory, but that's not what it's saying. Otherwise, we could put the scripture on and have it playing in the background while I'm sleeping. And in the morning, my faith is just intense. But what does it say? Faith comes by hearing, comma. Hearing comes from the word of God. Say that out loud with me. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Hearing comes from his presence, not just listening to the Bible, but when my ears and my heart are tuned and tied to what God is saying. 
That is so key. I'm not just listening with my hear, my ears, but my heart is tied to what God is saying. My hearing has to be tied to the heart of God's message. Whether I understand it or not, there is something in me that God has to be tied to the words that God is speaking. Okay? And so His word activates my hearing. This is just so, I, I wish I could camp on that and, and spend the rest of the time on that, but I, I need to keep moving because it's a full package deal. Faith comes by hearing, but the ability to hear comes from being in the presence of God. Anything that's of value that I hear comes from tied to connected to what is God saying about this. And when my ears and heart are tied to that, it affects my faith, right? So with fresh eyes, I want you to remember this verse in memorizing. Faith comes by hearing. But hearing is tied to what is God speaking. Because if it's old words, sometimes you'll miss the current thing. And I'll just give you one point of illustration out of the Old Testament. God told Abraham, I want you to go take Isaac, your son, and sacrifice him. Was he obedient to that voice? Yes. Okay? So he was on the mountain. He was ready to do it. He had the knife raised. But what? God had a current word and it said, wait. Had he not continued to listen to the voice of God, he would have missed what God was doing in the moment. So instead of just running out in front of the Ark of the Covenant and saying, okay, I know where I'm going, I know what I'm supposed to do, we've got to maintain a listening to the Word of God because the heart of God helps me with my current situation. i got to keep going. Now, in the Greek... <clears throat> Um, the Greek uses two different words for the word word, okay? Um, did I get ahead of myself? No, nope. okay, thank you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That word, word, in the Greek, the Greek has two different ways, logos and rhema. Logos is the written word, such as our Bible has been written down, or you have a word from God. God gives you a promise, a vision, a saying, a something. You write it down. That would be considered logos, the writing of the scripture, okay? Now, um, I get into the weeds there if I keep going. Okay, um, then there's the rhema word. A rhema is a current, fresh, spoken word, okay? So in this scripture, faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes from the word of God. It comes from the word rhema. So if I could rephrase it in Gary's, uh, um, where, do, where do I have that at? This text could read, faith comes from hearing and being able to hear comes from the fresh spoken rhema of God. Did I, did I get that? Okay. So my ability to hear has to be connected to the fresh spoken word of God. But in this case, when we're talking about what comes out of your mouth, and last week I talked about what your ears hear, uh, um, just to recap some of that. Most of your senses are divided in half. Your eye does the left hemisphere. Your, your, your left eye does the right hemisphere. Your nose is cut in half. Right side does left. Your tongue cut in half. Hands cut in half. Your, but your ears are different. One ear covers both sides of your brain. So when you hear something, your right ear, left ear covers the full thing. And you, when you hear something you hear it one-fifth of a second after you say it. One-fifth of a second after you say something, if you receive a reward for um, an action, it reinforces it, so it it's, uh, um, causes you to stay the course of what you're doing. Okay, uh, I kind of muddied that up. You'll have to get the notes from last week. But what I think is true with this verse when it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema spoken word of God, I believe personally 
This is amplified, it's enhanced, it's supercharged when I say it with my mouth, what God is saying. Because when I say what God is saying, I am tying my heart to his heart, I am hearing it, and so I am back again to talking about how God made me physical to respond to a spoken word. So faith comes by hearing. And I think when I speak the word of God, my faith is supercharged, enhanced, or uh, did you get the picture there? Okay, let me keep going now. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2 says, Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, again, I know I've belabored this, this, this text, but it is so rich with meaning. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Our minds need to be renewed so I think like God, I talk like God, I act what God is saying. So how do you do that? You get saved, and yet my whole nature, my soul, is still identified as a sinner saved by grace instead of I'm his favorite. Instead of understanding I'm a son of the king, my soul still holds on to wrong, lying thinking. Okay? So I need to be set free from that. Or transformed, my mind, my thinking needs to not conform to this world's of thinking, but be changed by the word of God. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now that word uh, 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 be transformed is the word metamorpho. Uh, it's where we get our word metamorphosis. And the best illustration of that, most of us already know this, has to do with a caterpillar going into a cocoon. And in the process of being in a cocoon, there's a, a, a supernatural, they can't explain how this grub can turn into a work of art overnight in that cocoon. But it's called metamorphosis. And you've heard this before. How does the caterpillar get in the cocoon? Out of his mouth, he spits a silk thread and he wraps himself up in silk that comes out of his mouth. So say it again. That grub wraps himself up with what comes out of his mouth and the process after that is a transforming work of art. So in this text, when it says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, I present to you, related to the scripture that we just said, faith comes by hearing the spoken word of God. What comes out of my mouth wraps me up. And when I quote the word, which is already anointed, whether I feel it or not, whether I like it or not, whether I understand it or not, is irrelevant to the fact it has an effect on my body, on my soul, on the atmosphere. It's a supernatural thing that you can't imitate. And so when I wrap myself up with what God is saying, there's a transforming of my mind to be able to prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Now, I've got to stay in my notes. Otherwise, we won't be done here today in just an hour or two. I find it fascinating, and I look at some of the fun facts that we shared last week about one-fifth of a second later and how God is, has created our bodies. Today, I want to look at, at some more fun facts, how God has created me, the mysterious, beautiful way God has designed my bodies to respond to a report. Whether it's a good report or a bad report, God has designed your body to respond, okay? Now, I will probably, if, if you're into medical science, you'll probably say you didn't quite get that right. And I just concede. I am not a scholar in this area. I have studied it a number of times in my life. But I probably may butcher it just a little bit. But the, the truth of the principle is still there. If you want to Google these facts, you'll find they're right in the ballpark. But the principle is here. God has made us in our body with a pituitary gland that controls my whole endorphin system which is a system of complex 
a glandular secretions that help my body function, okay? One set of glands that I want to talk about are, are hooked to our kidneys, and they're called adrenal glands, and they respond when you believe a bad report. We understand, you know, that, that instant fear type thing, your adrenal, your adrenal glands secrete adrenaline to your system and your whole body just goes, oh, and now you are, have been equipped to handle the situation at the moment. That's a good thing, right? It saved us a lot of times and that's why we're still here able to talk about it is because God made my body to respond with adrenaline and I got out of the way or I ran faster than the guy with the football or, or so anyway. A <laughs> truth is you and I are way faster of believing a bad report than a good report. We almost always, almost 100% of the time, will believe a bad report like that. A good report comes in and we go, hmm, I don't know about that. Especially if the good report disagrees with my filter of my baseline of truth, right? I grew up with this being true and God says, no, this is true. If I believe the bad... If I hear the bad, do you know where I'm going with this? Okay, God's made my system to be able to function when I hear bad news. We, uh, uh, we have to work at listening and hearing good news and believing the good news, especially if it disagrees with my baseline of truth. So when a pastor is talking or when a scripture comes says, this is true, there is something in me, my filters go into effect, I'm going, I'm not sure. I'm from Missouri. You're going to have to prove that. Okay? <laughs> Show me. So when you hear a bad report, our Adrenal glands instantly start pumping, right? They pump adrenaline into your system and it's designed to mobilize you into fight, flight, sometimes freeze, okay? Unfortunately, our adrenal glands are not built with intelligence to know what's actually going on. And so when our pituitary gland tells them something bad is going to happen, they start pumping. And when we have adrenaline in our system too often and or too long, the first thing it starts to do is destroy our immune system. And then it starts to attack all your basic organs. It's interesting as you study this, modern science will tell you a lot of the ailments that cause people to instantly slow down can be traced back to anxiety. And I, I would name some, I'll name just, a, just one, fibromyalgia, um, Crohn's disease, um, a lot of those, and, and I can make, if you have those here, I'm not trying to create guilt in you, just letting you know the enemy works on your system for you to believe and hear the bad report. Adrenaline starts to be in your system on a regular basis and your body starts to work against itself to cause you to be sick. That's just, I'm not talking anything spiritual level. I'm talking just the way God made our bodies. So knowing that, we need to uh, adjust what we say and what we think. I got to stay in my, my notes. Our bodies can't handle a constant desire, uh, uh, diet of stress. We can't handle a constant diet of bad news. So um, I just present to you, sometimes you need to turn the re TV off and not listen to the news. <laughs> because unless you're balancing the bad report with God's good report and allowing the good report to dominate your mind, the bad report will cause you to live in anxiety contrary to how God intended me to live. We think that's normal. Because we look around us and that's, okay, that's normal for everybody I know. But you know what? Sometimes God says, I want you to put all your toys down and just come into my presence. Leave your cell phone off. Just be with me and I will heal you. Heal your heart, heal your body. 
And so in that whole section there that I'm talking about, God designed me to respond to bad news. That's a good thing unless I live there. So if I agree with the lie, I believe the lie, then how am I going to live? I believe from the day you were born, the enemy tries to conform your way of thinking to a society norm that's not God's norm. And so that's why our scripture, our text says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be pushed into a mold of believing the lie. And so last month, I spent a whole uh, um, series on where is this coming from? What's the lie I have believed that's contrary to what God says is truth? All my life, I believe this is true. And then when God says, no, this is true, I'm going, hmm, I question the source of truth. Who am I that I should question God about his truth, right? And so even just talking about on a physical level, our bodies, when you live in a negative pressure, when I am conforming to the thinking of the world, I can't win physically, okay? Let me keep going. Now to the good news, how God created me. And what's, what's awesome about the good part of me responding to a spoken word, it's more than twice as powerful as the negative aspects on our body. Now, it doesn't get as much airtime, just like good news in the media rarely is ever talked about, because bad news sells, right? And we our attention gets captivated by the noise of bad news. But here's the good news, and we need to camp on that, and we need to be children of the light and not children of the darkness. One illustration before I get lost on this, okay? Do you know the night vision goggles that they use? Do you know how they work? The basic principle is it captures the available light and it, it, it intensifies the light that's available so you can see in the dark. If it worked just opposite, you couldn't see at night, right? And so an airline pilot that had night vision goggles, he could not see. But just the opposite is true. God uses the available light that we have and focuses it so we can live in a dark world without being blinded. That's so good. I got to keep going though. The good news God created you to respond to his word with supernatural tendency. And what I talked about before is natural tendency, but I want to intensify it. The good news always outweighs the bad. The blessing always dispels the curse. The curse cannot overcome the blessed. Light cannot be overcome with darkness. And so back to our pituitary gland, how God has created us, that is um, the pituitary gland can also release in our system something that's like an opiate. And it's called a peptide molecule. And that peptide molecule, when it's released in your system, it creates an ecstasy in your system. It creates joy for you. They have proven that when you say something positive, our brains respond positive. When you laugh, even if it's a fake laugh, I just, I just love this. <clears throat> fake laughing is a positive response and your body begins to respond. When you, our, our, our bodies are designed, when I say a positive word that I believe, Peptide molecules are released in my system. And you talk to uh, um, uh, uh, psychologists and psychiatrists, dopamine and the various other uh, words that I, I can't pronounce or whatever are released in my system when I believe something to be true and it's positive and I say it with my mouth, there is something released in my brain that gives me a sense of ecstasy, a sense of joy. And, and, and when I laugh, there is healing in that. And, and they have found that in, in burn wars, if they'll bring in uh, comedians into the burn ward, 
there is less pain than if they use morphine. Because what the body releases when you are saying and experiencing laughter and joy is twice as powerful as the negative things that your kidneys put out with adrenaline. So when I say a positive word, those peptide molecules are released in my system. The endorphins from the pituitary gland are 100 times more powerful than morphine. And it acts, uh, accents or uh, uh, accentuates my immune system where adrenaline starts to break down your immune system and causes your organs to shut down. These peptide molecules, these secretions of joy cause your immune system to be like 400% more than just normal, okay? They've proven that when you believe you'll get well and you say, I am going to get well, you will get well faster if you believe you will. That's all on the physical realm. Now you tie in the scriptures that we talked about. And we talked last week about what you hear yourself say. And when you believe something, the rewards that come from that. When we speak the truth, Philippians, or, uh, Romans 8, 28, I know that all things work together for good that love the those that love God, when I speak truth, the first time your mind says that, there's something in me that says, oh yeah? Well, what about? Because the way the enemy causes me to conform to my environment, I have been, in a systematic way, made to think this way. And so... Okay, I'm going to try this spiritual God stuff out. And in the middle of the face of all the evidence that nothing is good, nothing is going right, I am going to quote with my mouth out loud Romans 8, 28. I know that all things work together for good to those that love God and that are called according to his purpose. Okay? Everything in me is wired to believe just the opposite, right? But with my mouth... I quote a spiritual word that creates atmosphere because it's already been spiritually anointed. I don't have to work it up. This is not mind over matter. This is the word of God. God said, I have anointed my word. God said, I will send my word to heal you. God said, when you say what I say, the environment is impacted. And so when I line my will up with the will of God, nothing feels right. It's not according to my feelings. My heart just says, okay, I am going to do what God says. All things work together for good to those that love God. When I say those positive words, endorphins are released in me. And the first time my mind says, oh yeah, well, what about? Half my mind says it can't be true. But the other half says, no, God says it's true. And I'm going to be on his side for a change. And so I'm going to say it again. All things work together for good to those who love God and call according to his purpose. I'm going to say it again. All things work together for good to those who love God and call according to his purpose. And I refuse to be conformed to the way this world is, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind, by what comes out of my mouth. I wrap myself up in the word of God and there's a spiritual happening that changes my thinking. I am transformed. The way I think is changed by the supernatural word of God. It's not mind over matter. I don't just make it happen because I believe I am aligning myself with the God of this universe that a word spoke this into existence. I'm so in One of us has got to be right, and I know it's not me. So I am going to say again, it doesn't feel like it's right, all things. All things work together. What about this? Oh, yeah, well, what? No, God said all things work together for good that does love God and call according to his purpose. And so out of my mouth, I keep speaking truth. And that truth creates a new baseline in my belief system. And as I am transformed by the word of God, I now believe what God says is possible instead of my intellectual belief saying, I don't know about that. So how do I change a negative heart? I get in the presence of God. I say what God is saying. 
And so Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. So back to the ear. How can your ear hear it if it's not spoken? Sometimes it's good for us to just read out of the Bible out loud. Sometimes it's powerful for me to quote Scripture out loud. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. And what? Health to their flesh. Sometimes we read the Old Testament in these scriptures and we think it's all metaphorical. Could it be that when God says it, it's health to your flesh, that it could be literal? Yes. Yeah. When I say out loud with my mouth what God says, it actually affects my flesh. I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to my thinking. But God's word is true. And so, my son, give attention to the things I'm saying. Don't let your, depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. Health to your flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart flow the issues of the life, the abundance of life. Have we heard that recently? Remember Heather Ann's talk on from the abundance of the heart? Out of the heart, life springs. Keep your heart because out of your heart flows life. And so it's interesting. When you start looking at scriptural things, my heart feels, my heart thinks, not just my head, my heart. And they have proven, I, I'll get in the weeds, so I'll just touch it and go on. I believe they've proved medical history that the heart also has uh, um, cells that retain memory, not just the brain. And so when I align with what God says, whether I understand it or not, there is something released in the physical, there is something released in the spiritual, and my soul is benefited. That part of me that I can't see, but that interacts with God. My past, present, and future are changed by the word of God that I speak with my mouth. I'll close with this. <clears throat> Usually we start out with a split mind on every truth that God gives us. But we need to wrap ourselves up with the word of God. What comes out of my mouth so my thinking can be transformed by the spoken rhema word of God. What a difference there is in my life when with my mouth I believe and I say, I know that all things work together for good. For good to those that love God. I know that all things work together for good. In this situation, I don't understand it. I don't know how it's going to play out. But I know all things work together for good. I'm God's favorite. Why wouldn't it work? When I believe what God says is true with my heart, and I say it with my mouth... I hear it one-fifth of a second later and there's released in my system a reward, a benefit, a peptide molecule that makes me go, yeah! Now I don't always feel that, but sometimes I do. Again, my feelings are not a baseline for truth, Amen. right? My past experience cannot dictate the power of God. I can allow it from happening in my life. But God's power is still there. And so when I believe in my heart and I say in my mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ, God's raised him, I believe that God says I'm saved. And, and uh, do you remember last week what you shared with me? How did Jesus fight the enemy? When he was in the desert, tempted, what did Jesus do? He spoke. The word. What was the second point? Do you remember? Uh, I wrote it down. Ephesians from the full armor. Full armor. Yeah. The offensive weapon that God gave us. Yes. The gifts of the Spirit is the spoken word of God. It's the sword of the Spirit. 
Yes. So for those listening online and didn't hear that, the only offensive weapon that God has given us as Christians in the spiritual armor from Ephesians is the Word of God. And it is powerful, mighty, through God to the pulling down of the strongholds that the enemy established in my life. I didn't even know it. I picked it up as a child. From the moment I was born, the environment presses on me to think contrary to the Word of God. But this morning, having heard the truth, the Bible says you'll know the truth and the truth will make you mad. (laughs) My quote, it sets me free from the device of the enemy contain me. You hold the same presence that Jesus held when he walked this earth. You have access to the same anointing and authority that Jesus did. And he said, it's important that I go away because when I go away, I'll send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, and then you can have more. You can do more than Jesus did. I don't get that but I'm not the one that said it. Jesus said, greater things will you do because I go to the Father. The Holy Spirit is in you. So what are you going to believe? What's coming out of your mouth? I want to close with that. This morning, what's coming out of your mouth that has wrapped you up and the wrapping up action produces death? Or, what's coming out of your mouth wraps you up and transform your thinking to conform to what God says is true. That's where I want to go. And i got to work on this. And, and this week, I can't give details because most of it doesn't make sense to me. But after having preached about making my voice and my feelings line up with the Word of God, last week, for no reason at all that I can put a handle on it, I was tested in this area. And last week I said, it's not easy to believe what you already believe different. It's not easy. I already believe this to be true. And then God says, no, this is true. It is hard to change the way you think. That's why this isn't physical. This is spiritual. So in a couple moments, I want to pray for you. And I want to pray that God does something in you that you can't do on your own by positive thinking or by just a principle that you put into action. I want to pray that there is a supernatural work done in your life, your thinking, your heart, so that the word of God will be your baseline of truth. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you have showed us today. God, I thank you that your word is that baseline. It's a foundation that will never move. I thank you, God, the way you made our bodies to respond to the good report and the bad report. This morning, Father, many of us identify with the anxiety that comes for a continual diet of believing a bad report. Forgive us for staying there. Help us to exercise self-control and begin to, out of our mouth, say what God says is true instead of CNN or Fox News. That we would, with my voice, declare the goodness of God. Father, I pray over this congregation that there would be a heart change in us, that we would line up with your truth Not because we feel it, but because our will has been given to you, regardless of how I feel, I will be obedient to the voice of the words that are saying coming out of my mouth. Father, like David prayed, set a guard at the gate door of my mouth to keep me from speaking against what God says is true. I pray right now over my thinking, every heart in the room, God, that there would be a supernatural change.
Because we have been in the presence of God. We have yielded our will to you in spite of our feelings. And we say, God, have your way in my life. And as a result of that, my life will change. My spouse will change. My children will be exposed to the presence of God. My neighbor, the environment around me, as I conform to the presence of God, and I transform by the renewing of my mind. I wrap myself up by with what comes out of my mouth and faith is built in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. One word of encouragement. It may not feel like it, but it's true. I set my will to do what God has asked. One of the guys that base information came from back in the uh, 1900s. (laughs) Before 2000, anyway, if I just said that right. He was a retired psychologist from Bozeman, I think, Billings. Billings. And he made a statement that we've lived with for a number of years. I can do hard things. Just saying it with my mouth. I can do hard things. I hear it. It activates in me a truth. I believe it, and the word of God comes and be established. God bless you this morning.